never possible without going too deeply uh, into technical aspects uh, of the legal framework. My title reads Cryptocurrencies and Initial Coin Offerings and means that uh, I'm uh, going to address financial uh, markets, but before directly addressing uh, blockchain, I would uh, like to lose a few words on fintech in general. Fintech and blockchain are obviously uh, not uh, identical, notwithstanding the fact that uh, partly the terms uh, are almost used interchangeably. Uh, fintech uses uh, digital services, blockchain uses a particular uh, infrastructure in some uh, fields, there is identity, but uh, fintech is uh, on the one hand much larger because many financial uh, services do not really rely on blockchain, on the other hand blockchain is insofar much larger as this infrastructure can be used for supply chains, for uh, governments, uh, uh, etc. In Switzerland, and I'm mainly watching on Switzerland because law still uh, is a national domain. We have a so-called three pillar uh, system. The first pillar consists uh, in amendments of our banking law, of our banking uh, ordinance. The second uh, pillar is described as so-called sandbox approach. Switzerland has a little bit stolen this term from the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom was the first mover having introduced the sandbox uh, model. This means that children may play on a playground or in a sandbox and if, since uh, children uh, are small it also means that uh, only uh, small startups are allowed to use this sandbox approach in uh, Switzerland. Uh, the sandbox uh, approach is limited to one uh, million deposits of uh, investors. And uh, the search uh, model, uh, that's really something which uh, has been invented in Switzerland, it's the so-called license light. License light means that certain startups and small fintech enterprises need a license, but the license is uh, much uh, less detailed and requires much less compliance than a normal uh, license issued for banks or for uh, securities uh, dealers. This closes basically my introduction to FinTech, but I would like to draw your attention that whatever you do in financial markets, you have to comply with uh, know your customer or the anti -money money laundering uh, principles is, has uh, already been mentioned by Professor uh, Pauline, and I will come back uh, to that. And finally, a further uh, important point which I would like to make as an uh, introductory remark, apart uh, from a few amendments relating to the um, FinTech enterprises, Switzerland has not really changed the law as far as blockchain in financial markets uh, is concerned. Most regulatory uh, instruments are coming from our financial market supervisory authority called uh, FINMA, and I will come back uh, to that. This uh, leads me now to the actual topic of my presentation in the blockchain, and as you can see from this uh, uh, slide, Switzerland does uh, not intend to uh, issue a blockchain law. There is no blockchain law for the time being. There won't be any blockchain law in the near future. This Swiss uh, position has to be seen in contrast to the positions of a couple of other legislators in Europe, in particular legislators of small uh, countries have been decided to develop and implement a blockchain uh, law. Examples are Malta, Tiny Island in the Mediterranean Sea, 
and the principality of Liechtenstein. In the meantime, you are aware of the fact that we do have a small, a very small country next to Switzerland, which is Switzerland and Austria, called Liechtenstein. And Liechtenstein uh, has introduced uh, a blockchain law, or let's say the law has been published a couple of weeks ago and will enter into force as of January uh, 2020. Why did the Swiss legislature decide not uh, to implement the blockchain law? First of all, because uh, blockchain can be used for uh, services in whatever kind of market segment, as I already mentioned. In my opinion, blockchain is at least as important for supply chains than in financial markets. And how can a law really comply with the requirements of the supply chain on e-government and uh, on financial markets? And on the other hand, this legislature has been of the opinion, and still is of the opinion, that most legal uh, problems for the execution of uh, blockchain transactions in financial markets and for the tokenization of digital assets can be dealt with more or less suitably with the existing laws. In other words, our contract law is apt to be applied on smart contracts. Our property uh, law does apply to actual goods uh, however, not to digital assets. So since data cannot be subject of um, ownership uh, principles, we don't have to change uh, our property law. And finally, as far as uh, data protection privacy uh, is uh, concerned, we do have a special problem of anonymization. I'm not going into the details of uh, that aspect. This uh, brings me basically to the point which I mentioned before. Law is set by our regulator, so not really on a legal level as we are used to do so, in particular in civil law or as we learned in the first year of our law studies. However, the law is set by the regulator by the supervisory authority. And the most well-known uh, guidelines which uh, have been implemented by our, our regulator are uh, the guidelines of February 2018 describing different kinds of uh, tokens, namely the payment tokens, the utility tokens, and the asset tokens. Payment tokens very uh, obviously are uh, crypto uh, currencies. Uh, in other words, the first and most likely also uh, the easiest category concerns something which we frequently have in real life, namely uh, the cryptocurrencies. Then uh, we uh, do have as a second category the utility tokens, utility uh, uh, tokens uh, basically leads uh, to the possibility of uh, getting a reputation or a uh, service. So utility tokens are, tokens are not necessarily financial instruments. And uh, then we have the asset uh, tokens. And asset tokens normally are to be legally qualified as uh, securities, having um, obviously the consequence that uh, securities law is uh, applicable. This uh, uh, classification, again, has uh, been more or less an invention by the Swiss regulator. This classification has been taken over by the regulatory bodies of other European uh, countries, because apparently these regulators were more or less convinced that uh, the classification made uh, sense. As a general uh, principle, I would have to add that Swiss and uh, also generally European financial market regulation is uh, principle-based and technology um, neutral. 
And the classification, according to the FIMA guidelines, has to be done in accordance with the so-called duck test. That's not a joke. Uh, the duck test has been introduced by the chairman of our sister relationship. And the duck test means something which looks like a duck and behaves like a duck must be qualified as duck. In other words, you can call something utility token. If it appears to be an asset token, it will be qualified as an asset token. In other words, the function is more important than the description and the name um, of a token. There are obviously hybrid tokens um, uh, as well. Usually hybrid tokens contain elements of utility and uh, asset characteristics or in certain circumstances elements of payment and utility uh, tokens. What you don't see on uh, this slide by uh, purpose is the term uh, of the stable uh, coins. Stable coins have also been mentioned by Professor Ho uh, A. But uh, stable coins have now been uh, subject to new guidelines, very new guidelines. Uh, FINMA has published these uh, guidelines on stable coins only on September 11 of this year. So they are uh, about uh, 20 days old. Why has uh, FINMA been in use or motivated to work on the stable coins? Because Libra Association, so to speak, the payment arm of Facebook was uh, implemented at domicile in Geneva, in Switzerland, and Libra Association, as you uh, certainly know, is interested to uh, introduce uh, Libra as a uh, cryptocurrency, as a stable coin cryptocurrency, in a uh, couple of months. And, uh, since Libra Association um, is subject to Swiss law, Libra would have to fulfill the Swiss uh, regulatory framework. I.e., Libra has approached him, our supervisor, uh, has asked uh, our supervisor in Switzerland, well, what do we have to do to uh, issue uh, these uh, cryptocurrency uh, stable coin? in a proper and legal way, and in order not uh, only to serve uh, Facebook or Libra Association, they might decide to publish the general thoughts and uh, the guidelines. Perhaps uh, I should uh, add, the guidelines are a little bit broader than Libra. Libra intends uh, to be linked to fiat, Currencies, but in theory, there are a couple of other possibilities. Stable points can also be linked to commodities. Stable points can be linked to real um, uh, estate, or stable points can uh, be linked to securities. I'm concentrating now uh, on the pegging to fiat uh, currencies, but as I said, that's not the only option which the issue of stable coins uh, has. From a legal perspective, stable uh, coins do not have the characteristics of a so-called legal tender. In other words, stable coins are not accepted as the official currency of any uh, country. This does have some uh, civil law consequences. Creditor, um, uh, who uh, has the right to get some money is obliged to accept uh, legal tender in Korea, Korean one in Switzerland, Swiss France, uh, in Euro, Euro area, uh, Euros, etc. Nobody will be uh, obliged uh, to accept uh, stable coins. Nevertheless, central banks are afraid that they could lose weight uh, if uh, stable coins could play a big role uh, in 
the payment and money uh, systems. And if you have followed the discussions uh, after uh, Libra Association has published its uh, project to issue Libra Stoic Book, uh, you have probably seen that uh, central banks and many politicians have opposed uh, to the issuance uh, of Libra, not only in the United States, but also a couple of uh, central banks in uh, Europe, a couple of politicians uh, in Europe, for example, uh, quite clearly French uh, finance minister. And all these critical voices are uh, basically backed uh, on the reasoning that the monetary stability could be endangered if too many people are using too many different uh, stable uh, coins. We have to see uh, what is uh, going to happen. Let me just add, because I spoke about uh, Libra, and since I would assume that over time um, Facebook would also be interested uh, to place uh, these uh, cryptocurrencies in other countries than just in European countries. Two major issues are to be dealt with uh, in the liberal Facebook case. First of all, data protection, data security. We do have very strong data protection rules in Europe, general data protection um, regulation, and uh, Libra would obviously have to comply with uh, the respective uh, data uh, protection framework. Libra, by the way, has contacted in uh, Switzerland the data protection officer is, is trying somehow to uh, install a compliance network which would uh, really uh, lead uh, to full compliance with data protection rules. And uh, a second uh, concern, I think that's probably even a bigger uh, concern, is uh, competition law. Facebook is uh, obviously one of the uh, GAFA uh, giants, uh, uh, Google, Amazon, um, uh, Facebook, etc. Fa uh, Facebook does have many, many data, and if some kind of cross subsidization between the social network and Libra uh, should occur, then uh, Facebook would have a major competitive uh, advantage. And whether this is uh, somehow good for civil society is another question. But today I have to talk about uh, blockchain. I leave it with his remark, but, but some of my Zurich uh, colleagues know that my midfield. Uh, was during my teaching time competition law, therefore I had to make this uh, remark. Treatment of uh, uh, crypto uh, currencies, as I already uh, said, whatever you do professionally, cryptocurrencies is subject to compliance with uh, anti-money laundering uh, laws. In other words, it is uh, necessary to identify the direct anti indirect beneficiaries. This is not obvious and not always easy uh, on uh, the blockchain. However, at least in Europe, some guiding principles have been developed as uh, far as identification of direct and indirect beneficiaries are concerned. In my opinion, if uh, good programs are uh, developed, blockchain could even help to uh, do this uh, uh, transparency uh, exercise in a more efficient and more professional way and in particular if blockchain solutions would be uh, developed uh, this identification test could be done once and only once and not by every bank which uh, is opening an account uh, for a beneficiary. At any rate, organizational measures have to be uh, implemented people being involved uh, in uh, doing transactions, in uh, uh, establishing wallets, uh, etc., are to be educated. We do have in Switzerland and in most uh, other 
European uh, countries, special supervisory authorities being willing to educate the uh, involved uh, people and uh, the respective of laws of cryptocurrencies are also supervised by uh, these uh, authorities in Switzerland, at least to a major part, we are looking at self-regulatory organizations uh, which uh, are then uh, themselves supervised by FIGMA, uh, the regulator. I'm putting some weight on this remark because the whole ANL uh, compliance is a very time-consuming and usually also uh, rather costly um, uh, exercise. I have to tell this also to uh, small startups, which uh, think that it is very easy just uh, to issue a cryptocurrency and then trade with a cryptocurrency. The regulatory part uh, is only one side of the metal. The AML part is the other and more uh, important. Part. This leads me now uh, to the uh, ICOs and on uh, this slide I have put myself into the position of a practicing attorney. In fact, I also practice attorney <coughs> apart from my function at the University um, of uh, Zurich. If a client comes to me and uh, is interested to do an ICO, then I'm going with uh, him or her to the points which uh, I have uh, put on this slide. First of all, an assessment of the project feasibility. Some clients have very nice ideas, but the ideas are uh, before and not very sound. Evaluation of the project subject and design, and also relevance of the legal and regulatory environment, and the question how the processes of the governance principles can be implemented. If you think this would be now a theoretical exercise, then I can give you uh, the answer immediately now. Why do I do this exercise? Because in connection with the February 18 guidelines, FINMA uh, issued a so-called questionnaire. And if you want to get either a license or clearance and no license, is uh, required, you have to fill out the respective questionnaire. The questionnaire encompasses about three or four pages, and you see here the headlines of uh, the questions which are answered, uh, which are to be answered, so which are part of uh, the request to get the license from FIGMA or the request to get confirmation of no license. Uh, is uh, required. Uh, what I have listed uh, on the last slide basically corresponds to the information which uh, has to be filed uh, to FIGMA. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not uh, going now into the details. You can, by the way, download the guidelines as well as this questionnaire from uh, the homepage uh, of FIGMA. Uh, uh, you can look um, through uh, the details if you are. Uh, uh, interesting, but this information is then also finally part of the so-called white paper, which should make the uh, ICO uh, transparent and uh, which uh, might be a document of some 20 to 30 pages at the far end. Nevertheless, this uh, document is of course much shorter than the prospectus, which uh, has to be published if securities are uh, placed on a stock exchange, prospectus nowadays encompasses about 800 pages. <coughs> on this list, uh, I have uh, mentioned the different regulatory and uh, normative uh, instruments which are to be checked when <coughs> starting an ICO. And uh, aware of the fact uh, that I do not have the time to go into all the details and we need probably also be a little bit uh, technical. As I mentioned before, KYC AML is a key requirement, must be complied with no uh, 
doubt, at least in case of asset and payment tokens. In case of utility tokens, if you only receive the service, which is not financial, then uh, the AMM test uh, uh, can uh, be uh, circumvened. Nevertheless, uh, one has to be very careful that the service is really concern non-financial issues as soon as dividends for example are uh, included we do have a high token and then the overall has to do the KYC AML uh, exercise money ex uh, exchanges bitcoin or any other uh, cryptocurrencies uh, to uh, fiat money is also subject to KYC AML securities uh, laws in case of asset tokens because uh, asset tokens are um, securities, utility tokens, very often not, only, for example, dividends are uh, included. If you are familiar um, with US law, I can only add that uh, asset tokens are not to be qualified as commodities according to Swiss law and also according um, to other European laws in contrast to US laws in the US, tokens are often qualified as a commodities banking law being the most serious law in Switzerland uh, is uh, not often applicable only if uh, the issuer is taking deposits um, from uh, customers and deposits uh, are higher than one million which is uh, usually not the case collective investment teams laws usually, usually uh, the tendency in the answer would be uh, no, except uh, if somebody is interested to do some kind of uh, crypto fund. I'm uh, uh, trying to be now um, very short. I have uh, two slides which give uh, you an overview of the uh, governance uh, of an ICO. And uh, perhaps I use this opportunity to say that uh, if you look at the market and we had a high peak in 2017, the number of ICOs has gone down um, in 18 and uh, it has even further gone down in 2019. So we have only a very few numbers of ICOs uh, these days. And for that uh, reason, if you uh, look uh, into media, uh, messages of these days. People are not talking anymore about ICO, but rather about SEO, securities uh, token of offerings, because there are so many fraudulent ICOs that nobody likes to use the abbreviation, the acronym ICO uh, anymore. Compliance procedures, as I said, several times is giving us the AML and the regulatory requirements and data protection issues, data uh, securities, and don't forget accounting and taxes quite uh, important if you issue uh, uh, tokens and uh, you do have to uh, do a proper uh, accounting and finally you might have to pay uh, uh, taxes. I have listed possible taxes in Switzerland. That's now probably too uh, uh, technical. I would um, rather prefer to lose a word on intellectual property rights. Quite often ICOs are uh, done for uh, financial support to develop certain computer programs, certain software. In such a case, one has to check whether the software and computer program would be uh, protected by copyright law in uh, uh, Switzerland as well as in the EU countries. Software computer programs are a matter of copyright law. In contrast to the United States, in the US, uh, software uh, computer programs could eventually also be subject to uh, patent law. And then we would have to uh, look at the question whether there are uh, know-how and business secrets, uh, secrets. This is particularly the case in the countries of the European Union, and that's nevertheless most uh, of the countries in Europe, except uh, um, Switzerland and a very few uh, other countries, the European Union knows a spe specific directive on the protection of know-how and uh, business uh, secrets. And this uh, leads me now to the very last uh, slide. 
as I mentioned at the beginning, the Swiss legislature said we don't need the blockchain law. However, there are a couple of legal problems which uh, need to be tackled, and the main problem, I, I'm now back at, at Professor Boeing's presentation, the main problem consists in the transfer of tokens. If you do the tokenization, then you want to go to trade with the tokens, and on the Swiss law, trade of tokens, since tokens are not property, but uh, just uh, financial right, must be done based on a so-called assignment, and uh, Swiss law requires a written form for assignments. The written form is, of course, very practical. Uh, we do have an e-signature law, but nobody really applies uh, e-signature, and for that reason, uh, Swiss legislature has presented a bill to the parliament introducing a new form of uncertificated securities. Tokens are now called uncertificated securities, a little bit complicated, but that's uh, the legal term. And if this uh, law will be adopted by the parliament, it would be possible to transfer, to assign the tokens um, without a written uh, signature. The law would also introduce a couple of requirements for electronic or uh, distributed uh, ledgers. This law, by the way, would not be technology neutral since uh, it is designed to deal with the existing forms uh, of a blockchain. There's even a new provision on invalidation of tokens. That's a very courteous provision, by the way, if it can uh, come uh, into uh, force. It is very obvious that uh, tokens uh, might uh, be lost over time. People forget the private key. What happens then? You do not have any private uh, key uh, anymore, and the law would introduce a possibility to invalidate tokens, similar as it is possible to invalidate shares and securities these uh, days. The problem is only the technique, and I have to play the ball then uh, to my uh, fellow colleagues and friends, Gerard and Torka. How can an invalidated token more or less be removed from the blockchain? Probably not so easily possible. And finally, you would have some uh, liability rules if anybody would be interested to learn more about uh, the new law and around for the lunch time and everybody close thank you very much for your attention.